warning to the brethren. Brothers and sisters in Christ, once again, if you're lost, go to the salvation message. I'll link that too. I'll be doing a lot of links on all this where you can go and refresh your heart with the Word of God. 1 John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. There's a lot of people out there that you're to try the spirits, you're to judge them according to the Word of God. Um, they might have a nice suit and tie. Um, they might sit there with their hat sideways, glasses, and, and they look worldly and hippie and hip-hop and whatnot, and they just look cool. No, it says, believe not every spirit. You don't have to look at them and say, hey, they must be good because of how they look. You're to judge their spirit. This man called Jesus a liar? He's not a Bible-believing, God-fearing man. Nobody that's God-fearing is going to call Jesus a liar. Um... They believe in the false gospel. Okay, they're not saved. They believe in the false gospel. It's bringing in outside sources, Catholic doctrine. Uh, the, um, what was it the Book of Jas Jasher and the apocryphal books bringing them in? Um, nobody with the Holy Spirit in them would go would basically turn their back on the Word of God and use outside sources to prove what they want when the Bible doesn't teach it or prove it. 2 Timothy 3.13 But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The best example I can come up with is the whole thing that came out, and I don't know when it came out, but way back they're like, people wearing hats, they didn't have logos on them. People who bought things, they didn't have logos, shirts, they didn't have logo, nothing. It's like somebody came up with the idea that, you know what, if we put our logos out where people can see them on our products, that's free advertising. And now you notice there's logos on everything. And same thing here. People say, how does it apply? But evil men and seducers shall works, wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Hmm, if I can, I know it's wrong, but if I can deceive this person, they can pass it on and deceive two people, and then those people pass it on and deceive two more people. I don't have to sit here and deceive everybody. I just have to deceive a few and let them pass it on. And next thing you know, it's running rapid. Uh, the true gospel, nah, you don't want that. Easy believism is what you want. You want to be saved by your faith. Oh, pre time of Jacob's trouble? That's so in the past, you know. That's so yesterday. <laughs> Gosh. you got to watch out for those evil men, and we got to pray for the brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray God deals with them. We pray God keeps us strong, keeps us rooted in the Word of God. Colossians 2.8, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Matthew 15, 3, but he answered and said to, unto them, and if I can find the next page, do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your traditions? Okay. Another one, uh, Mark 7, 13, making the word of God of none effect through your traditions which ye have delivered, and many such like things ye do. Another big thing that they're going to try to pull you away from with, brothers and sisters in Christ, there are things, I have no doubt, there's things in the Bible-believing Christians that they've fallen in the trap way back when, and it became indoctrinated stuff into the Word that's tradition. That's not God's Word. Uh, Trinity's one. Um, God in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Um, You've done the study, you realize that Martin Luther refined Catholicism. Then you had other people that said, hey, we want nothing to do with Catholicism. But they both wanted a perfect written word of God for the people to have. And they both believe that you're saved by God's grace. But because of Martin Luther not wanting to just say, I want nothing to do with the Catholic Church, he tried to reform it, you know, remake it. 
And he brought these terms in, so people go down and say, tradition, 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 we've always used this, it's the term that's accepted among the people. That was pretty sad when, that, when Robert Breaker said that. That's how I knew he was a man pleaser, not a God pleaser. He didn't say the Word of God says such. The Word of God says this. The Word of God says, no, it's, the, it's what's widely accepted among the people, the body of Christ. It's what the people want. Man pleaser. Okay. Don't fall for the traditions of men. One of the things about traditions of men is people love, and I miss it sometimes too, but people love everyone getting together, doing barbecues, talking, laughing, having a great time. Um, it's just the traditions of men are not to exert the authority of God. If your family has a tradition, like every year, we, at this date, we come together and we do something as a family. There's nothing wrong with that. It's when your traditions usurp the authority of God's Word, which it doesn't, but you let it in your life. The tradition overpowers God's Word in your life. Okay? Don't let them entice you and tempt you with the traditions of men. I've had a lot of women say, I miss the fellowship when I went to these battle buildings. I've heard men I can't remember if I said women, but men and women. And I hit them up and I said, don't give in. It wasn't fellowship. It's not the fellowship you missed because it was never there. It's the social atmosphere, the social club. I had the same attitude a year into being saved. I started getting what you call withdrawals. Social interaction withdrawals. And I tell them, you need to stay strong. That wasn't fellowship. Today, fellowship is so hard to find. We're in the last days. People try to grab Hebrews and say, see, it says, do not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's written to Jews in the time of Jacob's trouble. Instruction of righteousness, if it's possible, if it's possible, by all means, you should be fellowshipping in person if it's possible, or in a letter, because back then it was letters, but we have emails, other ways to phones, um, Skype, but if it's not possible, you're not in sin. That's written to the people, to Israel's, the Jews, in the time of Jacob's trouble. In these last days, fellowship is very hard, and it's only going to get harder, because bottom line, what's the whole point of this? How great is the falling away? And how serious are we taking it? Proverbs 6.19, A false wit witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among the brethren. Um, I must have missed all that, but a false witness that speaketh lies. How many, you got to be careful about false witnesses. They'll say something in the Bible that's true, and then they add to it. They'll say something that's in the Bible that's true, and then they talk about this over here, and then they say something that subtracts from it. Okay? False witnesses. And when you have false witnesses, they sow a discord among the brethren. You have people coming in saying, oh, I believe... Back to what we were saying about uh, people used to stand for King James Video Ministries are now going over to other camps. They believed in the true gospel. Now they're in camps that and they were in at the same time. I just, I just can't fathom how, how you can do that. How you can be following Robert Breaker's ministry and following uh, King James Video Ministry. Uh, Brother Brian, and say they're both the great Bible teachers when they teach different things, different Gospels. And it's like, what happens? You have false witnesses. When they're with uh, one crowd, they believe this. When they're with the other crowd, they believe it, something completely different. And then when they decide, okay, i got to pick one, I'm going to try to grab as many people from the opposite crowd to the way I'm going. False witnesses, and what do they do? They sow discord among the brethren. They pull people away from the truth. 2 Corinthians 11.26 And journeyings often, and perils of water, and perils of robbers, and perils by mine own countrymen, and perils by the heathen, and perils in the city, and perils in the wilderness, and perils in the sea, and perils among false brethren. You're going to get a lot of people put this on you, that you're not to judge whether someone's saved or lost. Yeah, you are. Okay. I have been deceived so much. Um, my wife that left me two years ago, 
Uh, oh, I'm a King James Bible believer. Yes, I want to live this way. Yes, I believe all these things, the fundamentals. Talked with her for over a year about the King James Bible. Oh, yes, I believe this. I believe this. She wasn't saved. Okay? It was my fault, whole different story, by not, you know, listening to the Lord. I let my loneliness get the better of me. Sometimes we're just going to be lonely. But bottom line, there's false brethren out there. There's false brothers and sisters in Christ that aren't saved. They're there to sow discord like we just talked about. They're there to pretend. Or they're just trying to be part of this club because it seems cool at the time. But we always got to look for something new, 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 new. There are false brethren among us. you got to make sure they prove themselves. Over and over and over. Oh man, we've been talking for years. That's okay. What's your take on the gospel? Man, this is the tenth time you've asked me in the last year. Always, always make them prove themselves. Make me prove myself. I've been deceived so much that some people think when I'm asking them to prove themselves that I'm being controlling. No, I've just been hurt so much in my past by false brethren. I'm not forcing you to believe as I do. If you don't, I need to know because I don't want you sucking up to me, sugarcoating things. Oh, we just got to agree to disagree. Uh, no. Galatians 2.4 And that because of false brethren unaware brought in who came in privily to spy out your liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us into bondage. Remember we talked about people who followed King James Video Ministries and Robert Breaker when they're King James Video Ministries. Uh, and the reason I'm saying this is because remember in Galatians, one minute you're saved by having faith and repentance, finished work of Jesus on the cross, confessing both in prayer, asking the Lord to save you. You're saved by God's grace through faith. And then when Paul was gone, now you have to be you have to continually merit your salvation by keeping the law, good works. Same thing. All the gospel, that's the true gospel. Any other gospel is false. Those guys are lost. They're on their way to hell. Then they flip over to Robert Breaker's camp. Oh, it's only easy believism. It's, you're saved by your faith through God's grace. And anybody who teaches anything different, they're lost. And they keep going back and forth. you got to watch out for that. Mark 8.35 for whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for a soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, the true Jesus of the Godhead, and of my words, God's perfect written word, oh, we've got to add terms that aren't there. We've got to ignore scripture that proves repentance, belief, confessing both in prayer and calling upon the name of God. We've got to just ignore it. And my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Okay. There's people that want to gain the world. I need more views. I need more money. Um... I want to be popular. I want to have my own little cult following so I can have power and control. Some people like that. Um, so they do what they can to gain the world and they're on their way to hell. It's not worth it. So when you see people like that that are man pleasers, like uh, Robert Breaker is, that it's not about absolute truth. What are your opinions? What are your feelings? What do you think? I don't believe the Apocrypha books are part of the inspired scripture, but they got a lot of neat things in them, and, and they could be true. I mean, what do you think? So basically, he just pleased people that believe that, supposedly, he didn't deceive people that are truly saved. He, did, he deceived people into thinking that he's pleasing the crowd that believes the King James Bible is God's perfect written word, and only inspired, that the Apocryphas aren't. But then he, he pleased the people who believe the Apocrypha books are. He, he just pleased both crowds. He's trying to gain the world. He's trying to please everybody. Except true Bible-believing Christians. 
1 Timothy 6.20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and opposition of science falsely so called, which some professing have erred concerning the faith. Grace be with thee. Amen. Hey, I threw that in there too because they tried to use science to predict the catching away of the body of Christ. Uh, Steve Anderson tried to use false science saying that we're all basically Jews today. I mean, you got to watch out for that. Uh, profane and vain babbling. Okay. I was just... There's people that will say this, say that. The best profane and vain babbling that, that I can express to people nowadays is Edward P.F. He's all about attacking people personally. He's about attacking people, feeding people's flesh when they like to fight and argue and debate. And it's all profane and vain babbling. It's worthless. Okay. It's absolutely worthless. Proverbs 16.8 Pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Back to the people that believe in the true Godhead but refuse to give up the terms because of pride. And the destruction is you hang out with the Trinity crowd long enough, you'll find yourself turning your back on the true Godhead. You stand for the true Godhead, but you're using false terms, but your pride won't let you give up those false terms, and you hang out with that crowd. Next thing you know, you're giving up the belief that you once had in the true Godhead. Same thing goes for any of the pre time of Jacob's trouble, the true gospel. You hang out and fellowship with the lost world and lost people that have been deceived and passing on that deception, you're going to start getting deceived yourself. Ephesians 1.13, In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. You've got people who come through, it says, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. People are going to try to come and take this from you. Yeah, it does say this, but, you know, let me tell you this story that teaches differently, but it's a cool story, and I'm going to throw in some jokes, he, 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 and we're going to laugh, I'm going to put on a good show, and I started out by reading this, but now I'm totally pulling you over here that goes against it. Don't fall for people that won't stick to the word of truth. And where do you find the gospel of your salvation? In the word of truth. Don't let anybody tell you you're not sealed okay, with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, this meant to be a short video, but I knew it was going to be long once I started doing it. Here's encouragement. That was the bewares. Beware of people like that. Okay? And brethren, in the comment section, I threw some verses out that I could get across. There's probably lots of other verses out there. If I missed a verse, throw a verse out there that warns us about this world, warns us against sin, warns us against wolves in sheep's clothing, warns us about how bad it's going to get. And then when I get to the encouraging, throw out some verses to encourage the brethren. Okay, this is supposed to happen, but you know what? God's our strength. No. And we're going to get to that. Encouragement, 2 Timothy 2.3 Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're to endure. One of the teachings of um, your conscience that I probably didn't get straight forward during the time of J Jacob's trouble, your conscience has to endure to the end. Because you're going to have to endure to the end to be saved. You cannot take the mark of the beast. You can't weaken your conscience defile it, let it become evil, and take that mark because you go to hell if you do. But today, your conscience can still endure. It can fall weak and you can fall away, the great falling away. How great is the falling away? You're to endure hardness. Your conscience is to endure hardness. As a good soldier of Jesus Christ, no man that warreth entangle himself with the affairs of this life I've been guilty of that one where I get so worried about things that's got to get done around me that sometimes it's like I've hardly read the Word of God. I've hardly talked to God. 
I've been, some people call me crazy because they'll see me talk and they're like on the beach. Um, when I'm standing on my deck, neighbor comes up, oh, who are you talking to? The Lord. Man, he's a crazy nut because I talk out loud sometimes. But don't let the affairs of this life get you down. If you're called to part-time or full-time ministry, yes, you're to love your wife. Yes, you're to take care of your wife and your children. But you've got to understand that's part of the cares of this life when it comes, the affairs of this life when it comes to what comes first, the ministry or the affairs of this life. If you're putting the ministry first and you're putting the Word of God first, God will make it so you can take care of your wife and your children spiritually, physically, and let you do things that bring joy and peace in your life. But you can't let the affairs of this life get in the way of your walk with the Lord and if you're part of ministry, to get in the way of your ministry. That He may please Him who hath chosen Him to be a soldier. We are soldiers for Jesus Christ. Okay? And... Um, I won't be linking this one, but Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries, in the video that's uh, key scriptures that every Christian should know, he goes into that verse in greater detail and explains all the different attributes of a soldier. And I totally believe it. And it's something you need to watch every so often to remember this is your duties, this is what's going to happen to you. You're a soldier for Jesus Christ. Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. If you're getting into temptation, God will strengthen with you. Okay? Remember, there's no temptation taking you than that you are able to bear. And I just probably screwed that up. But uh, you can't get tempted above that you're able. God will not let that happen. You fall into temptation, it's your fault. But you can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth you. Struggle with the flesh. Feed the Spirit. So you keep the flesh down, and the flesh becomes weak. You're still going to be tempted, and every once in a while you're going to fall into temptation and to sin. But remember, we struggle as Christians, true Bible-believing Christians, to change life. We struggle with sin. We don't justify it. But you can do all things through Christ to strengthen you. It doesn't matter how bad the world's getting. The affairs of this life is getting, like I said, there's... Sisters in Christ, and also we had brothers in Christ a few months ago that were saying, hey, they were having problems at their work, um, people losing their jobs, not having a place to live. Um, okay? I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Don't let it get you down. Brothers and sisters, we need to be praying for each other. We need to be lifting each other up with Scripture. And if you, it's within your power to help somebody physically, uh, do your best to do that for brothers and sisters in Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Okay. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have a perfect written word in which to judge people by. Spiritual judgments. Okay, You want to guard your heart from fakes, from false prof, uh, false brethren, false converts. This is how you do it. You judge them according to the word of God. And they might pass the test the first time, the second time. There's people that might fall into temptation that I believe are saved. You get to the point where I believe they're truly saved, they fall into temptation. But the reason you keep listening to them and you keep judging them according to this book, even as a brother in Christ, you judge me according to this book. Okay? We're supposed to be subject one to another. Okay? So you're going to be able to guard your heart and it's encouragement. We'll get to the point, uh, there's a verse at the very end we'll get to. It talks about how the judgment begins at the house of God. Um, Ephesians 6.12, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. I've said it before, I don't hate Robert Breaker. I'm not fighting the man Robert Breaker. I don't hate Edward P.F. I'm not fighting the man Edward P.F. I don't hate Steve Anderson. I'm not fighting the man Steve Anderson. I don't know if it's catching on yet. Um, Greg Miller. I don't hate Greg Miller. Okay. They're just men. Okay. 
False teachings, some might be saved and have false teachings, but when they're lost, you're not to fight the man. If they're saved and having false teachings, you don't fight the man. Okay? Our battle is spiritual. You fight the teaching. You rebuke them, you correct them, and you stand for the Word of God and you do the proper teaching. You prove what their teaching is wrong through Scripture. You don't make it personal. Okay? When you don't make it personal, you'll have a lot more peace and you won't fall into sin. Losing your temper. Having, um... Oh gosh, my brain freezes sometimes. Bitterness. Bitterness leads to anger, and that anger leads to hate. And when you get into the battle between back and forth, where it's uh, personal attacks, well, he looks like Elmer Fudd, well, that person might be a closet sodomite, he, 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 let's make jokes, let's make pictures, and, and there. you're starting to do personal attacks, and that's because you let, you let the personal attacks that they do on you get to you, bitterness turns to anger, turns to hate. Why? Because you are retaliating with personal attacks. When all you're supposed to do is stand for the Word of God and give God the praise. I did that video. Uh, give God the praise when you're attacked. But remember, our battle is not against flesh and blood. We're to fight false doctrine. We're to fight the new versions. We're to fight Catholicism. We're to fight easy believism. We're to fight post and mid trib okay? we're to fight anything that's against eternal security dispensational teaching that's where our fight is it's not against men 1 Thessalonians 2.13 for this cause also thank we God without ceasing because when you received the word of God which you heard of us you received it not as the word of men but as it is in truth the word of God which effectually worketh also in, in you that believe Okay, make sure that you're thanking God without ceasing. Giving God thanks for everything. That helps out a lot, believe it or not. Humbling yourself. All throughout the day, I thank the Lord. And there's still times that, especially during the summer, my favorite time of the year, spring, summer, and fall. I'm not a big winter fan. Uh, sorry, Brother Brian. I think, you're, I think that's what's wrong with you. You're into winter. You know? You're completely false because you're into winter. You know, you don't take a personal thing and judge somebody. It's a joke. But I sat on the deck and I give God thanks for everything. I'll sit there and just go through my head and just start thanking for everything. Little, big, small, everything. And talk to the Lord and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. Give God thanks in all things. Okay. And mainly, my number one thanks is for God's perfect written word. That's always my number one thanks. This is what led me to the true roadmap, if you want to say, to salvation, to God saving me. This is what helps me struggle with sin and keep sin out of my life. This is what gives me the do's and don'ts and how to live a godly life. This tells me what I can do to earn rewards. Okay. And remember, this is God's perfect written word. Don't let anybody pull you away from it. Pray for the brethren on all this. Hebrews 11, 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a warder of them that diligently seek him. It takes faith. The true gospel takes faith. Um, the Godhead, but without faith is impossible to please. And people who keep trying to explain, and there's brothers in Christ that are standing for the Godhead and attacking the Trinity, that they're still falling into the trap of explaining how the, God, the Godhead works. We're not to do that. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. In the Godhead area, I'm trying to stand for it, but you keep falling into the trap of trying to explain how it works, you're not pleasing God. You're simply to have faith. This is what the Bible says. This is what the Godhead is. Take it or leave it. You want the Trinity? Go ahead, take it. Have it. See what God does to you. Go. You're not to sit there and try to be a car salesman on anything. If someone's ready for the truth, you tell them. You try to tell them the truth, they say they don't want anything to do with it, 
You're done. You're not to be a car salesman. You're to have faith. They don't want the faith, then they can be gone. And remember, brothers and sisters in Christ, back to what I said right here, it says, to for them that diligently seek Him, make sure you're hiding God's Word in your heart. You're going over old studies that you haven't gone over in like six months. Go over them again. Keep God's Word in your heart. Keep the truth of the true gospel, pre-time of Jacob's trouble, um, the true Godhead, dispensational teaching, uh, the Bible version issue. Every once in a while I'll go and watch some of the Bible version issue videos. I've seen them a million times and people are like, why do you watch them again? Because I want to keep it in my heart. I want to keep it in my heart so I don't start to forget or start to stray from absolute truth. Keep it in your heart. Diligently seek truth all the time. Even truth you've found, keep seeking it. Romans 12, 2, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Don't conform, brothers and sisters in Christ. The world is against the true gospel. The popular thing is you're saved by your faith through God's grace. Don't conform to the world. Don't fall into the trap of traditions. Don't fall in the trap of being part of a club and missing all the social react the social club. Okay. First Timothy six ten for the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. I was going to do a video and I might still um, about the Trinity is the reason that a lot of these people, these leaders, quote leaders in Christianity, these people in these Babel buildings, could one of the reasons that they hold on to the Trinity teaching, knowing it's wrong, they know it's wrong, they can't stand before God and say, I didn't know the Trinity was wrong, I thought it was wrong. No, they know, but could be, they be teaching it because it helps them make money. It's what the people want, it's what the people like, it helps them make money. Could people, well, you've heard this tons of times by brothers in Christ that teach and take donations that they've been told that they could, if they bought a Babel building and they got rid of the King James Bible, they can make more money. Why do you think people like Robert Breaker turn to easy believism? He can make a lot more, get a lot more views, a lot more subscribers. He can make a lot more money giving the people what they want with easy believism. If he stood by the true gospel, he'd lose a lot of people. If he stood by the true Godhead, he'd lose a lot of people. If he made it out where this is absolute truth, this is the truth, your feelings and your opinions don't mean squat. If it goes against this word of God, God's perfect written word, if he had that attitude, he'd lose a lot of people. So are they doing that to make more money? They gotta keep the people happy. Don't fall for the love of money. Don't let people deceive you that are falling for the love of money when it comes to the faith, the fundamentals of the faith. Okay. How great is the falling away? Very great. Are we taking it seriously? I think we need to take it a lot more seriously than we are. Um, KJV Ministries, The Great Falling Away, I think I may have mentioned it, it was done three years ago. And things are 10, 20, 30, 50 times worse than it was three, time, three years ago. We are dropping like flies, brothers and sisters in Christ. We are getting closer to the catching away of the body of Christ than people realize. We are getting very, very close. Because I don't think God is going to let us all drop off like fall away, and there's going to be nobody standing by the time he catches away. I almost said the wrong word. Uh, it's something you got to work on. Catching away the body of Christ. When he takes us home, I believe there's going to be some of us standing. But when you see it falling so fast, and so many people are falling away, dropping like flies, catching away the body of Christ is just around the corner. The falling away is a great danger, and it is getting worse and worse as we are getting closer to the catching away. I said that. I did exclamation points because it is very serious. I'm just not going to scream. 
1 Peter 4.17 For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God, and if it first begin at us, that shall, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel, the true gospel, that people are falling away, and if the righteous, righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Now, I always tell people, self, brethren, lost world. Judgment begins at the house of God. Your body is a temple for the Holy Ghost. So judgment begins here. Tonight I'll be doing communion, because I haven't done it in a while. And I just turned uh, 39. I'm getting old. Judgment begins here. You need to judge yourself according to the written word of God. You need to always be going through everything, saying, okay, does my beliefs line up with the word of God? Instruction in righteousness, does my life line up with the word of God? You judge yourself first. Then you can judge brothers and sisters in Christ. You always keep judging yourself. It's a continual process. I know some people might not get that. You don't just judge yourself once, I'm good. It's a continual process. Make sure you're not falling away. Continually judge yourself according to the Word of God. Judge brothers and sisters of Christ. Lift them up. Encourage them. Pray for them. Correct them. When they are starting to fall away and you see it, you correct them on the spot. Hey, brother, you're starting to fall away. Even if it's just something little, you're starting to fall away. Don't, don't even get started falling away. We need that. You judge brothers and sisters in Christ second, and then you judge the lost world. And you don't judge them by saying, you need to obey the word of God as far as their sins. You judge them by letting them know God's word says that's a sin, and you're worthy of death. The wages of sin is death, and the cost of sin is going to hell to burn for all eternity. You judge the lost world last. But judgment must first begin at the house of God. How great is the falling away? And are brothers and sisters in Christ, am I taking it as serious as it really is? Thank you for watching.